guys. Welcome back to 1776 or Bust. So on the table, you see a new addition to the old collection. And it's kind of new, but it's sort of not new for me. Now, I've owned a P07. Heck, when they first came out with the P07 duties, I bought one of those. And this is now going to be kind of my last P07 that I'm ever going to own. Not because I hate the gun, but because I really don't need another one. This one kind of fits me perfectly. You know, obviously, they've come out with the black versions. They came out with the FDE ones, the urban gray ones, and then, of course, the OD green. I, I really just like this one very much, so I went with the OD green to replace the one that I sold quite a while ago. Now, in regards to the P07, you know, for those of you who remember, they used to have the P07 Duty. And interestingly enough, the P07 Duty, guys, was a pretty solid offering from CZ. It certainly was not the best. Uh, there were definitely some problems with the handgun, you know, from the slide finish to just the, the edging in regards to the slide because it had a lot of sharp points on it. Also, one of the things you're going to realize, too, is that um, ultimately there was that issue with the polymer. Again, um, you know, with the original polymer, you were actually having separation right in this area here. So when the gun got a little bit older or it was shot and heat up, you'd get a little bit of separation from the polymer and the steel insert, which, you know, CZ did come out and say, oh, there's no problem. The gun will still function. So don't freak out about it. However, that didn't build a lot of confidence for a lot of the people who own that original duty. So eventually when, of course, CZ came out with the newer generations of P07s, a lot of people right away grabbed them, myself included. And uh, I have to say it was a much needed improvement. It was a great refreshment from the old P07. And when they came out with the second generation, what you would realize is a lot of the features that they had on this handgun had been changed for the better. So they wound up smoothing out the edges. They wound up rounding a lot of the things, uh, in, or I should say a lot of the slide, beveling everything so that, and uh, yes, I'm pointing this camera. Oh my goodness, don't freak out. But you're going to notice that uh, at the old PO7s, these were more of a triangular shape. Now they've been beveled on the edges, so it's a lot smoother. Again, um, a lot of those harder edges that you found on the original PO7 duties had been changed. And like I said, it was definitely a needed improvement. One of the other major changes they made in this handgun was the polymer. They actually use now a, a reinforced polymer. So you really shouldn't see that separation from the steel from the polymer. At least you shouldn't. Now, I've never seen or heard of anybody who is having that problems on the new PO7, and I would suspect that it would not happen. Again, one of the other major improvements they made was the trigger system. Basically, what these Omega systems are is a more simplified version of the original triggers. Again, you can take any of these trigger systems out and you can put them into another PO7 and they'll work perfectly, no problems. You won't need to go out and replace anything because, again, the trigger assemblies are all the same. The, the breakdown of them is much easier than what they used to be. So they've really simplified the trigger and the housing and everything else. So, you know, that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. It just depends on really who you are. Again, in regards to the Omega trigger system, you're going to find that you can replace the decocker with a safety only. Again, I choose to carry it in a half decock position and then ultimately having a shorter double action um, and, then of course, that immediate single action as well. Now, again, when the P07 was created, it really was created to be a more direct competitor with, of course, the heralded Glock 19. Now, again, there were some obviously glaring differences. First off, it's a double action, single action, hammer fired handgun versus the classic striker fired handgun that Glock was used to making. Again, size wise, it's relatively the same. Um, this one's slightly larger, but not by much. It certainly uh, feels a very similar feel to a Glock and maybe not as boxy or blocky as a Glock, but nonetheless, relatively the same size. Again, fit and finish on the newer versions are much better, so they definitely made it more competitive with some of the other handguns out there. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who have moved away from this and now go to the CZ P10. Again, I did not have much luck with the P10, so that's why I actually went back to what I believe CZ does best, and that's hammer-fired handguns. Now, if there was one major complaint I would have about this particular model of gun, the P07, in my opinion, probably has one of the worst double single action triggers of any CZ that I've ever owned. Now, does that make it a terrible gun? Absolutely not. You know, you sit there, you shoot it at the range, you get really adjusted to that double action pull, and you should be fairly uh, efficient with that handgun. My only gripe with this trigger is the fact that that double action is extremely heavy. And, I, you know, extremely is kind of a choice word, but I feel it's a little bit overly heavy, but I also feel that it's overly grimy. Now, what I mean by that is basically the trigger, guys, when you pull it in in double action, it is a, just a heavy, ugly feeling trigger. You can feel metal to metal contact uh, 
almost like the, the metal pieces need to smooth out a little bit when they're rubbing on each other to be able to get rid of that, that, that grittiness, I guess you could call it. Now, in regards to the take up, once you get to the back, the trigger keeps on moving to the back, which is kind of interesting because, you know, it'd be nice if they shortened it up and the trigger would break a little bit more forward, but again, to each their own. In regards to the single action, the single action, again, it's not bad, but it's not really good. Uh, and what I mean by that is that it is a fairly short reset. The problem is, is that when you hit that reset, that trigger actually keeps moving further to the back. It's got a lot, a lot of more travel going before it actually drops the hammer. So again, can you do something with that? Of course, you can go to Cajun Gun Works, probably buy a nice little kit, or send it off to them if you want to spend that kind of money. Again, it's up to you. I probably will be dropping about a $20 spring kit in this just to see what it does. As a matter of fact, I've dropped one um, in my PO1, and I actually dropped one in my PO1 Omega. And I have to say that uh, the triggers now feel much better. That double action is incredibly smooth compared to this right here. This one, on the other hand, is just as soon as you get to that point man it, it feels like you've got to really put a lot of pressure on that trigger and it just keeps on until it finally breaks um, so it's definitely not the world's best trigger again i'll just show you quickly that reset it's it's not the shortest it's not the worst but the reset is decent and then of course you have that extra play and just a little more slight movement before the trigger breaks so it's certainly not the cleanest of triggers but it's certainly not the worst either I mean, overall, if you're looking for a really good affordable handgun and you really are happy shooting double single action handguns, or maybe you feel more comfortable with that as an offering for concealed carry, then honestly, guys, you really should look at the CZP07. You know, it's got great ergonomics. The trigger is decent. It's not horrible. It's not bad. It's not great, but it's a decent trigger. On top of that, the fit, in, uh, the fit and finish is, is excellent compared to what these used to be in the duty form. And then ultimately, the price. The price on these handguns are fantastic. Now, obviously, you're going to probably pay a little bit more for the ones that come in the FDE version or the OD Green version. Why? Well, because you're getting the night sights from the factory. If you want to pay less, you go with the black model that probably won't have those night sights. And you can probably find those right now sometimes for 400 maybe 450 even sometimes lower depending on what the sales are and where you're looking. Overall, I've been very satisfied with the P07. I, I think it's a great handgun. I don't see um, why somebody wouldn't want to get something like this. Now, of course, like I said before, a lot of people are kind of turning away from the P07 and jumping on that P10 wagon. And I, I don't know if that's the right thing or the wrong thing. Again, I know for me personally, I did not have very good luck with the P10s, and that's why I went back to that. And the simple reason is because, honestly, guys, if I was going to look at a P, or excuse me, if I was going to look at any CZs, in my opinion, they should have a hammer. And the reason why is because, to me, they make them extremely efficient. The fit and finish of them are fantastic. And overall, I've had no problems with any of these handguns on the table at this point. Obviously, this has the least amount of rounds through it. This one is really just sitting in my safe doing nothing. But this one I've carried, this one I've shot through quite a bit and have had zero problems with it. Now, on the last note, again, I think one of the most debatable factors in all CZs right now are the trigger shapes. So in regards to the P01, the original one right here that I have on the top, if I zoom in really quick, you'll notice that obviously the shapes of the triggers are completely different. On the original P01, you have more of that hook trigger. Some people say that it stings their finger when they shoot it, which is kind of interesting because I've never experienced that. And what's even more interesting is, as you can see on the P07 with that, not necessarily super flat trigger, but just a little bit of a curve in that trigger, I've actually noticed more of a uh, vibration in this trigger than in this trigger. And the only thing I can really relate that to is just simply the fact that this metal, the steel they use on this trigger, is a little bit thinner than what they have on the original curved trigger. So I think when you feel the vibration from the gun shooting, it, this distributes it a little bit better to the finger than uh, honestly this one. But again, that's just what I found. It doesn't necessarily make it true. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Tell me what you think about the P07. Do you think the P07 still has, um, I guess you could say, a place somewhere in your collection? Tell me if you carry it. Tell me if you love it. Tell me if you hate it. Or better yet, tell me what you replaced it with. So I hope you guys have a great night. Thumbs up or thumbs down, totally up to you. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Have a great night. night. Stay safe. And as always, freedom is never free.